Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video with us here at LMDN STEM Academy. In this video, we will be working through the Cape Chemistry Unit 1 Paper 2 from June 2023. We will be working through question one, which really tested your understanding of the topic of kinetic theory. So the first question is asking us to state each of the following laws. It's asking us to state Boyle's law and Charles law. Now Boyle's law states that for a fixed number of moles of gas at a fixed temperature, the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. And so typically the way that we would write this would be, right, is to say V is proportional to one over P and that takes care of the inverse proportionality. And so we would write that formula, generally speaking, when we're applying Boyle's law, we would write P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Okay, so this is all that we need to write to accurately capture what Boyle's law states, okay? So the second one here that they wanted us to state was Charles' law. And Charles' law states that for a fixed number of moles of gas at a constant pressure, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. And that's just the temperature, right, of the gas in Kelvin. And so how we would denote this in terms of an equation, right, we would generally write that V is directly proportional to T, okay? And so from an equation standpoint, whenever we're asked to apply Charles' law, we could use the form of the equation that says V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And I will link to our video where we went through all of the derivations in kinetic theory so that you will be comfortable, right, identifying these equations whenever you see them and you can recall them as needed. Okay, so I'll link that video here. Okay, so moving right along now, we've stated our two laws, Boyle's law and Charles' law. Now, the next question that they had for us was to list four assumptions made about gas molecules in the kinetic molecular theory with reference to ideal gases, right? So as it relates to ideal gases, what are some of the assumptions, right, that we can make in the kinetic molecular theory? And so these are, first, Gas particles are in constant random motion. So they are constantly moving and they're moving randomly, right? Gas particles, right? When we're talking about the ideal gas, they do not attract each other. There's, there are no forces of attraction between them, okay? That's negligible. Thirdly, gas particles have negligible volume. So when we think about the volume that the gas particles occupy, right, compared to the total volume of the container that they're in, it's negligible. So the gas particles themselves have negligible volume. And then lastly, what we could say also is that the collisions between the gas particles are elastic. So when they bump into each other or they bump into the walls of the container, no energy will be lost, okay? So when they collide, no energy is lost, energy is completely conserved, and so we said that the collisions between the gas particles are elastic. So here are your four assumptions. And so now we're ready to move on. So for question 1C, this was a question um, concerning a flask, right? A flask of acetone. And so the question reads that a flask has a mass of 47.392 grams when empty and 47.816 grams when filled with acetone vapor at 100 degrees Celsius and 745 millimeters of mercury. If the volume of the flask is 247.3 milliliters, 
what is the molar mass of the acetone? Okay, and then they gave us a value for the universal gas constant here. It is given as 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin. And then they tell us that 760 millimeters of mercury is equivalent to one atmosphere. Okay, so we have everything that we need to be able to calculate the molar mass of acetone. Everything is here that we need. Okay, and so here's how we're going to approach this question. The first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to realize that really the big objective here is that we have to apply the ideal gas equation to find the molar mass of acetone. Okay, and so we know the ideal gas equation is PV is equal to NRT, right? But in terms of what they've given us, right? They've given us a mass. We can find a mass of acetone and they want us to find the molar mass, right? And so when we look at this ideal gas equation and we see that there's number of moles there, what we need to recall immediately to make our lives easier is to realize that N, where N is the number of moles, can simply be represented as the mass of acetone M, little m, we're going to call the mass of acetone little m, divided by the molar mass of acetone, which is what we're seeking ultimately, and we can denote that as big M, right? And so because we, have, we can find the mass of acetone and they're asking us to find the molar mass of acetone, ultimately, it will be easier if we just make the substitution for N in the ideal gas equation, right? And so when we do that substitution, we're going to end up with this formula here. So now we've gone from PV is equal to NRT to PV is equal to little m over big M times RT. Okay? So now finally, because we're ultimately being asked to find what is the molar mass of the acetone, it would be in our best interest at this point to just transpose this equation making big M the subject, right? And so to do that really, all we have to do is we have to multiply both sides of this equation by M, right? So that we can get rid of the M in the bottom and bring it up to the top on the left, right? And so when we do that, the M's go away, right? And then because we only want M on, on this side by itself, we can then divide both sides by PV to get rid of the PV over here. And so we would bring the PV over here. Okay, so we get completely get rid of the PV. And so what we're left with now is this equation, which is our master equation that we're going to use to find the molar mass of acetone. And it's just that big M is equal to little m times RT divided by PV. Okay, so we have our equation that we have to use to find the molar mass very readily, right? And so now we have to look at the question again and see what all what's all of the information that we're given, right? We're given some mass information. We know the mass of the flask when it was empty, and we know what it was once it was filled with acetone vapor. And so we can find then what the mass of acetone is, right? Because we do need that to plug here in our formula. We need that to plug in here, okay? And so let's do that. Let's do that first. Let's find the mass of um, acetone, okay? So here's how we're going to approach that. The mass of the acetone vapor, little m, it's going to be equal to the mass of the flask when it was filled with acetone vapor, subtract the mass of the empty flask, okay? And so when we do that, what we end up doing is we say 47.816, which was the mass of the flask when it was filled with acetone vapor, subtract the mass of the empty flask, and that gives us the mass of the acetone vapor, which is 0 0.424 grams, okay? So now we're good, we have little m, all right? So I'm just going to fill those in as we go along. We have little m. So I'm going to go over here and I'm just going to write my little m as 0 0.424 grams. Okay. Now, we know that they gave us R. 
And we need to be very careful about this part. So they gave us the unit of R in liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin. So we're going to use that. Okay, we're going to use that. So I'm just going to drop that value for R right here since we're doing M times RT up top. So I'm going to write my R just as they've given it to me, 0 0.0821. Liters atmosphere divided by mole Kelvin. Okay, so we've taken care of these two variables already. Now we need to put in our temperature, our pressure, and our volume, and we'll be good to go, right? But the interesting thing that we have to note here is that our units all have to be consistent. And so because our R is in units of liters atmosphere per mole Kelvin, we have to convert our temperature to Kelvin because we were given that in degree C. We're going to have to convert this pressure that they gave us in millim millimeters of mercury to atmosphere. And we're going to have to convert this volume to liters. Okay, so this is how we go about doing that. That's the immediate next step. This is how we do that. So to go from 100 degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we're simply going to add to the 100, we're going to add 273, and that will give us 373 Kelvin, right? So I'm just going to drop that in up here. That, that's my temperature. That's 373 Kelvin, right? So all that remains now is I have to divide that through by the pressure and the volume. Now, the volume, we have to convert to liters, right? They gave us in milliliters, and we have to convert it to liters because our unit of R has liters in it, right? And so to do that, all we're going to do is we're going to essentially divide 247.3 milliliters by 1,000. And so this is what we do, and so we end up with the volume in liters. So I'm just going to drop the volume down here, 247. 0.3 times 10 to the negative 3 liters. And then all that that's left is for me to put in my pressure. We've already put in temperature. We just put in volume. I have to put in my pressure now, right? And the pressure, I'm going to convert the 745 millimeters of mercury to atmosphere. And they told us that 760 millimeters of mercury is equivalent to one atmosphere. So if we only have 745, it means that I can convert that to atmosphere by dividing the 745 by the 760 and then multiplying by one, okay? And so I come up with a value for pressure of 0 0.9803 atmospheres. And all that remains is for me to just write that here now as my pressure, okay? All right, so there we go. So now all our units are, you know, in they're all the same for the respective, you know, um, units that we need for the respective quantities. And so let's look at everything that we have now. M is equal to MRT over PV. This is our mass that we calculated for a stone vapor. This is our universal gas constant R. This is our temperature, and this is in Kelvin. This is our atmosphere, in a, this is our pressure in atmospheres, and this is our volume now in liters, right? And so when we look at this, we see that the Kelvins from the temperature cancel with a Kelvin from the R, the liter from the R cancel with the volume in liter, the atmosphere from the R cancels with the atmosphere and the pressure, and all that remains is gram per mole. And you might remember that we are seeking molar mass, which has units, right, of gram per mole. And so our units work out very nicely. And that's because we did our due diligence of doing the conversions, okay? So you have to be careful. You look at what the units of R is, and then you make sure that everything else lines up with that. Otherwise, you won't get your units working out, okay? So we've taken care of that. And all that remains now is just to plug these numbers into our calculator. And when we do that, we come out with a big M or a molar mass of acetone to be 53.57 gram per mole. Okay? All right. And so that's our answer. 
Okay, so let's just box that in red here. That's our answer. All right. So the key here was to realize from the jump that really all we have to do is apply the ideal gas equation and that will get us the molar mass. But you have to know, you had to have known that when you wrote down the ideal gas equation, there's a substitution that you could have made. And that's that little m over big M is the same as the number of moles and then transpose making M your subject. And then you are home free. As long as your unit conversions were fine or done correctly, you would have gotten this answer, okay? And so with that, we've come to the end of this question on kinetic theory from the June 2023 um, paper two for unit one. And so definitely go ahead and give this video a like, drop a comment down below to let us know that if, the, if this was helpful and if you have any further questions, and definitely subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you'll be the very first to know when we upload new content. Okay, see you in our next video.